What would you rather have? $100 today or $100 10 years from now? The vast majority of us are gonna say, give me the money now. Show me the money, Jerry. And you see, that's the very first financial concept we're actually gonna cover. It's called the time value of money. Now, why do you think that people want the money now instead of later? Well, for one, I may not be around in 10 years. For two, whoever's giving me the money may not be around in 10 years. These are called risks. And over time, risks increase because you don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow. You could have terrorism attacks. You could have pandemics. Just recessions in general. You never know what's around the next corner. So people would rather have the money now. The other portion of that equation is the fact that if you give me the money now, I can invest it and I get to pick what I invest it into. So if I want to be extremely risky, I can invest it into stocks and I can see if I can make some money that way. Or if I'm more conservative, I can just throw it into my mattress and I can hide it there and I know I have $100 10 years from now no matter what. You see, that's the big thing about money. Money today is worth more than money tomorrow. And it's because of risk, your ability to invest it, and inflation. Now you remember inflation, right? Inflation's why your grandparents said that they could buy a Coca-Cola for a dime, where nowadays we're paying $1.50 for it. Inflation is just the gradual increase in prices as economies grow. It's not a bad thing. It's just what kind of naturally happens inside economies. But due to inflation, a dollar today is worth more money than a dollar will be tomorrow. Which just means that I can buy more with my dollar today than I will be able to in the future. Just like how your grandparents were able to buy a full Coke for 10 cents back when they were kids, and now 10 cents would buy them not even a shot glass of Coca-Cola. So, risk, inflation, those are two of the same coin. So what if I was to tell you that, okay, your option set of $100 today and $100 10 years from now is $100 today or $110 a year from now. Now, which of those two options would you pick? You see, now there's a difference in the actual value of the money that I sent you. You say, okay, well, 100 bucks today is not $110 today, but $110 a year from now is not $100 today. So how do I decide which one's which? And these are common problems that we're gonna evaluate throughout corporate finance. The idea of corporate finance in general is built all around this idea that a dollar today is worth more than a dollar tomorrow. So for example, let's run this equation. You see, we can actually figure out how much future money is worth to us today through something called the present value equation. The present value equation just shows you that, hey, the present value of money, AKA today, is equal to the future value divided by one plus the discount rate raised to the number of years that it is difference between now and then. So for our example, just cause I know it's a mouthful, the present value of our $110 we're gonna get a year from now is equal to 110 divided by one plus the discount rate to the one power, because it's gonna be one year from now. Okay, so wait. What's a discount rate? We well, see a discount rate is just a very fancy way of saying interest rate. And an interest rate can be a lot of different things. You see, for me, it might be how much money I know I can get in return when I invest. So if I invest $100, I know I'm gonna get a 10% return. So for me, maybe this would be a 10% interest rate. But maybe for someone else, they're saying, well, my interest rate's gonna be lower. So you see, I'm actually gonna borrow money. And so because I'm borrowing money, I'm only gonna do a 3% interest rate. So their interest rate might be 3%. You see, Everyone's interest rate kind of changes, and we're gonna calculate those interest rates a little bit later on, but all you have to remember right now is that an interest rate is pretty much how much either money you expect to get in a return, or how much money you expect to pay someone when you invest or borrow money. So think of it as like a mortgage loan rate, or a car payment rate, or something like that. But long story short, it's some percentile, and that's kind of what the interest rate or discount rate is. And the reason they call it discount rates is because you are discounting the future payments by a certain percentage every year, and that brings it into present value over time. So let's say that for our situation, the discount rates can be 5%. Let's say that we believe that if we were to invest $100 today, we could safely and pretty assuredly get 5% return between now and a year from now. So our $100 is turning to $105, something like that. So let's discount that $110 that we're gonna get a year from now and see what that ends up looking like. So our full equation ends up being $110 divided by one plus 5% raised to the one. Remember that one that we raise it to is a number of years in between now and that payment. And since it's just a year from now, that's just one year. Now our equation equals $104.76. So that means $110 a year from now is equal to $104.76 in today. So now all we have to do is say, okay, is that more or less the other option? Remember the other option was someone gave us $100 today. Well, $104 is more than $100. So $110 a year from now 
is worth more money to us than the $100 would be worth today. Now, obviously there's some assumptions in there. The number one largest assumption is our discount rate, that 5% that we picked. If we would have picked a higher number, anything really higher than 10% would have made this not a good deal. We would have picked $100 today. And so that's why the discount rates are so important. And that's where we're going to dive into something that's called weighted average cost of capital. It's just a very fancy way of kind of mentioning about how much of an interest rate should businesses be looking at when they evaluate kind of options like this. But we'll have to do that right now. For right now, you just have to remember one thing. A dollar today is worth more than a dollar tomorrow. That's due to risk, inflation, and your ability to invest that dollar that you got today. Let's do one more example. Maybe a little bit more complicated this time, but I'm gonna let you use Excel. Now remember, Excel is every business analyst's best friend. So open up Excel, and we're gonna use what's called the present value and the future value equations. You see, this time, let's say that our example is you have two options. You can either get $1,000 today, or I will pay you $200 every year for six years. Okay, what's gonna be the right answer? Well, once again, it depends a lot on your discount rate. In this case, let's use a little bit harder number than 5%. Let's use 7%. Seven's hard to divide in the thing, so it's a tough number. So let's say that 7% is gonna be our discount rate. And the reasoning behind why we picked that or why that ends up happening is something that we'll get into a little bit later. For right now, let's just capture the idea of how to present value and future value dollars. So 7%. Now, before we are just kind of doing, we're taking the future value of money and taking it back, discounting it to the present value. But this case, we have future value in year one, two, three, four, five, and six. So are we gonna have to do this six different times or how does that work? And see, that's where we're gonna use Excel. You see, Excel has a fantastic formula that's just called PV. And PV in Excel stands for present value. And they also have a formula called FV, which stands for, you guessed it, future value. Now, future value and present value use the exact same information in order to create their final form and calculation. They both use that interest rate or discount rate. Both PV and FV call the interest or discount rate rate. So just with 7% or 0 0.07, given it's the exact same thing, Excel is good with either one of those. The next variable you'll see in there is in per, and that just stands for the number of periods. For our case, we're using years, and we have six years of payments. So we're gonna put six in there. That's all you need to do for the in per. And then next we have payment, PMT, and that's how much you're getting per period, or in our case, per year. So that was part of the equation. I said that I was gonna pay you $200 per year. So you put $200 there where the PMT is in Excel. Then of course you have the option to put in FV, which is future value. And so that would be something if say uh, at the end of this, say year seven, I gave you $1,000 back. So I paid you $200 every year, then last year you got a thousand bucks. Then you would put in FV there. However, since we're not doing that for right now, just put a big zero at FV. Now you're good to run it. Everything else is optional. So once you have all that in there, 7% interest rate for six number of periods for $200 payment per period, zero future value, you run it and you get a red $953.31. Now, why is it red? Well, Excel uses red to show that number is negative. And that's because Excel thinks in cash inflows and outflows. Outflows are always gonna be negative in Excel. That means that you are paying money, so it's gonna be a negative cash outflow. Kind of like the cash flow statement we did back when we were looking at financial accounting. And we're actually gonna get into a little bit about how to use inflows and outflows to calculate what's called the net present value of an opportunity here in a second. For right now, just skip over all that if that was confusing. So all you have to know right now, Excel does that because that's how Excel thinks. But really it's just telling you that the present value of all that information we just gave it was $953.31. So would you rather have $1,000 today or $953.31 today? Well, everyone's gonna say a thousand bucks today. And so in this situation, the future value of the money, even though it was $200 for six years in a row, is not worth more than the lump sum payment of $1,000 right now. I hope that helps explain a little bit how you can use Excel to make these equations a lot easier. And then also the different kind of aspects that go into each one of these. How many times a payment occurs, how many periods there are, the interest rate once again. And of course, you're getting a lump sum or not lump sum at the very end of it. In summary, money changes value over time. And that's mostly because of a discount rate. And a discount rate can come from a lot of different places, but all you have to know is that a dollar today is worth more 
than a dollar tomorrow. And you can use Excel's PV and FV equations in order to find out exactly what kind of opportunities are worthwhile and which ones are not worthwhile.